Today we'll be curing arachnophobia. Arachnophobia is the fear of spiders and I was struggling with this a lot throughout my life and how I conquered this? Well, I started shooting macro photographs of spiders. Now the easiest way to photograph a spider is if you find a place like this where you have a lot of spider webs and every spider is protecting their own turf. And for this I'll be using a diffuser and a flash and of course a macro lens. I'll be going with the Sigma 105mm f2.8 macro and this is for the Sony E-mount because I'm shooting on Sony cameras. I find this to be a very awesome lens. I say this so many times in my videos but Sigma really made a good lens with this Art Series 105. Now if you have a fear of spiders, this here would probably be something from your nightmare because I'm surrounded by spider webs and on every spider web there is a spider. Now I don't know what species these spiders are but this feels quite claustrophobic and well, uh, yeah, let's start curing. The best photos are the ones where you can photograph a spider head on. Oh wow, these guys are so fast, I mean they just disappear. If you cast a shadow onto them, they get scared and they, well, run away. So they're more scared of me than I am of them. So Alex, how many spiders did you see today? Um, a lot. Like on every photo trip, you need to find some coffee. Now, the interesting thing about little bugs is that they also have a personality. Like every other being on this planet, you have the shy ones, you have the frightened ones, the scared ones, and, well, the ones that are actually standing their ground. And those are the easiest ones to photograph because they secure their place and they're not moving a lot. So you can take multiple shots and stack them together into a focus stack, which in macro photography is something that you have to do very often. Is there anything left for me? Yeah? Yeah. So I brought the photographs into Lightroom. I've already chosen three of them, which I'm going to stack together in a focus stack. As I mentioned before, focus stacking with macro photography is, well, it's a typical thing that you have to do. So here are the three photographs, as you can see. One is focused in the front of this spider. The second one is focused somewhere in the middle and then the one that's focused in the back. So I'm gonna export all of this, open as layers in Photoshop. So here I have the three layers, I'm just going to do a fast focus stack. If you don't know how focus stacking works, pay attention because it's really easy. First we need to align the photographs together so that they fit one on top of the other. Some cropping will be necessary and as you can see some of the images were moved. So I'm going to crop this in just a tiny amount so that I have the full view. I'm going to crop it later on anyway, so delete crop data. Now with still these three photographs selected, go here, auto blend, stack images, bam and there you go, a one photograph where most of everything is in focus. So I'm going to save this, head back to Lightroom and do the whole edit in Lightroom. So here is the photograph stacked and in Lightroom you can see the settings that were used for all of these three photographs. Now I only have the one photograph where most of the subject is in focus. Not everything because I only took three photographs but there is more in focus than there was before with each individual photograph. So let's get into the develop, start getting some you know color and contrast to this. The basic adjustments, okay then I'm going to go into HSL and play with some of these colors. So I want to take down the yellows which are really strong, bring up the orange and the red to separate the subject from the background. Change the hue of the colors like this. This way I have a nice separation of the subject and the background, not just in terms of focus but also in terms of color. I'm going to crop the image in quite a lot because this was a 33 megapixel shot so I can really crop it in a lot and still keep a lot of detail. Now I'm going to start adding some atmospheric separation. So I want the background to be foggier and kind of blurrier than the foreground in terms of atmosphere, not in terms of focus. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go here under masks and use the background selector. So here I have now pretty much everything selected except the subject but I'm going to subtract the foreground. So I'll just take away this foreground with the linear gradient. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit dehaze, lift up the blacks to kind of simulate this foggy effect before, after and, and then really pull the attention on the subject. So under effects, vignettes, go back to the basics and now I want to put some more texture and sharpness on the actual spider which is the subject. So I'm gonna go here under masks, select subject. So I'm going to bunch up the sharpness, maybe texture and also clarity. There we go. So before, and after. 
it's a slightly bit sharper subject. And voila, here we have a focus tagged photograph made of three different photographs of a spider which now looks pretty humongous on the screen. So it's it's scary. I mean this thing is really a beast and a monster. So thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this already. If you have any comments or questions, leave that down below where I would love to start a chat with you. So anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.